Try this again. All right, yay, sound. Okay, a couple of announcements. Now that that's happened, I've forgotten them all, so that's okay. Um, first of all, if you plan on attending the Reformation Sunday brunch, please put that on the back of your attendance card. Um, also, uh, there's a bus trip this Tuesday. If you are interested in that, um, you're going to Walnut Creek for lunch and shopping. So if you're interested in that, there is a sign-up sheet out in the gathering space. So there is still time to sign up. Also out in the gathering space, we have our quilt uh, raffle. So please, I believe those were all made by Linda Burgess. Every one of those quilts. That's what I've been told. Is that correct, Linda? Nice job. Those are amazing. So every one of those quilts was made by Linda. So uh, please... Uh, look those over and bid on those and I'm sure there's something else that I'm missing um, but at the moment we yeah the fall festival thank you see I told you I'd miss something um, Zion is having their fall festival anyone who would like to help uh, that's on the 28th correct pastor Eli yes so Saturday the 28th uh, they're looking for help, so if you're interested, please uh, let them know uh, what you're willing to do. We also thank Pastor Eli for being here. Thank you for joining us this morning. Any other announcements? Seeing none, let us begin worship. Beautifully done, Ed. Thank you. Good morning. It is so good to be with you once again to celebrate in worship 
in light of the circumstances in our world, how things quickly change and do change, we are here to be reminded that God is sovereign in all things, in our world, in your world. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty. So I invite you just to take a deep breath, focus your heart and your mind on why we are here. Let's do that by standing together for our confession and our forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete, let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us, lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Number 167 in your red hymnal, please. 167.
Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah 25. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy. In their distress, a, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless winter was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on the mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the fears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. 
it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes. And I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you word of God word of life Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, 
bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I read the story about a religious teacher in India named Meher Baba. He gained a global audience with his old brand of Eastern mysticism. He claimed to be God in human form, yet he had nothing to say, at least not verbally. He was renowned for his silence. So far as we know, Baba didn't speak a single word for 40 years. He communicated using an alphabet board and with hand gestures or sending cables to his followers. He believed the universe was an illusion and that we're simply figments of the imagination of some higher power. Since nothing is real, he surmised, there is really nothing to trouble us. His most famous saying was the short phrase, don't worry, be happy. Life is essentially a mirage, he taught, so why worry about it? Have fun while it lasts and just be happy. In America, Baba's message struck a chord. One of his devotees, some of us will remember, was Bobby McFerrin, who turned Baba's slogan into a popular song. Don't worry, be happy. Remember it? McFerrin sang in a breezy style with a Caribbean accent. Robin Williams was also in that video, that musical video. It showed up everywhere political campaigns, films, television shows. Don't worry, be happy. If only, if only it were that easy. Life is not an illusion and worry cannot be managed so easily. It takes far more than four words of a song. Just ask Robin Williams. That's right, you can't. I don't mean to be disrespectful or insensitive, but don't worry, be happy, didn't work for Robin Williams. The trouble with worry is that it doesn't seem all that harmful. But of all the joy stealers that can plague our lives, none are more nagging, more agitating, more prevalent than worry. We get our English word worry from the German word vergen, which means to strangle, to choke. Jesus mentioned that word picture when he taught about the parable of the sower. He said a farmer went out to sow his seed, and some fell on the path, the walkway. Some fell among the rocky places where there was shallow soil. Some fell along the thorns, and some on good soil. Jesus said that the seed sown among the thorns hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. In other words, when worry throttles our thinking, it will choke out the truth, and we are unable to grow spiritually. Along with becoming mentally harassed and emotionally strung out, we find ourselves unable to be fruitful for God. A study by the World Mental Health Survey found Americans to be the most anxious people in the nations that were covered by that research. We spend millions of dollars every year on anti-anxiety medications and other millions of dollars to fund research into the causes and cures for anxiety disorders. And apparently we haven't found the cures yet. 
although we spend all that money. Listen to the remarkable omission found in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. For when we came into Macedonia, the, this body of ours had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within. Fears within. Who had fears within? The great Apostle Paul struggled with those things. How about you? Do you have fears within? Do you wrestle with worry? God has something to say to all of us about this issue of worry. And Diane read it for us in Philippians chapter 4. Listen to it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's no, don't worry, be happy. It's rejoice in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. Friends, rejoicing in the Lord demonstrates our willingness to trust God so much that our attitudes are affected by that behavior. When we make up our minds to rely on God in the storm or in the sunshine, the weight of our burdens are lifted even if our circumstances remain unchanged or become worse. When we stand on God's promises, our spirits are elevated, our emotions lift upward to the perspective that shifts us Godward. Remember the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 11? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rejoicing in the Lord is clearly a scriptural command. We obey it when we confront ourselves in those times we are letting worry control us. You see, it's important to consciously stay aware of the importance of a cheerful countenance. Stop reading only those grim sections of the newspaper or those emails or Facebook posts from such negative people. Block them. Watch less television and start reading more books that feed your heart and your mind. Find Christian friends who see life through the eyes of Jesus, which in is in itself more encouraging and affirm one another. Mahatma Gandhi is quoted as saying, shared laughter creates a bond of friendship. When people laugh together, they cease to be young and old, master and pupils, worker and driver. They have become a single group of human beings enjoying their existence. What the Bible is encouraging is for you and me to make a choice, a choice to rejoice. Please remember, God doesn't give us commandments without providing grace needed to fulfill them. We all battle discouragement. We all struggle with anxiety. But with the power of God's word and the indwelling Holy Spirit, we can re regulate our personality. We can say with the writer of Psalm 42, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and my God. Rejoice in the Lord. Notice that extremely important phrase, in the Lord. Without it, that verse would be nonsensical. We cannot always rejoice in the circumstances 
that we face. We certainly cannot delight in the people or the problems we face. We cannot rejoice in the state of our world. There's nothing joyful about what's happening in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine. We can always rejoice in the status of our homes or our marriages or our jobs or our health or our finances. Those things are a poor basis for joy. But whatever the circumstances may be, we can choose to rejoice in the Lord always. Here's why. Psalm 16, verse 11. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. We can rejoice in God's presence with us. Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things God works for good for those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. We can rejoice in God's providence. Philippians 4.19, for our God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We can rejoice that God will provide for us. Hebrews 13 verse 5, God has promised never to leave you, never to forsake you. We can rejoice in God's protection. You see, friends, in any and every circumstance, even when we can find few reasons to not worry, we can rejoice that God is with us, that God is working in our lives, that God is providing for us, that God has promised to protect us and never leave us. Don't worry, be happy. No. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Whenever we find ourselves worrying, our first reaction and action ought to be to get alone with God. We need to see God's greatness, the majesty of God. We need to remind ourselves that God is El Shaddai, God Almighty. And that God is big enough and powerful enough to address any and every problem we have. Too often you and I rush into God's presence hastily telling God our problems instead of what we really need is what the psalmist said, Psalm 46, verse 10 Be still and know that I am God. Once you and I are in tune with God's greatness and God's majesty, we can then bring before God our needs and our problems. This is no time or place for half-hearted, insincere praying. We realize God wants us to be earnest in our prayers. As he said in Matthew chapter 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks find, finds. And to you who knocks, the door will be open. And as a result of that, the peace of God which surpasses all, All understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God has promised to us that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. When Paul mentions peace as a guard, he uses a military term for marching sentry duty around something valuable or strategic. As we give our worries over to God, corporal peace is appointed the duty of marching as a silent sentry around our minds and our emotions. Don't worry, be happy. No, that doesn't work. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Yes. My friend, the joy of the Lord isn't optional. It's essential. If we are going to replace our anxious thoughts and feelings and experience God's wonderful peace, you and I have to learn to rejoice in the Lord. As we rejoice in the Lord, it will remind us who God is and what God can and will do in our lives. Number 765 in your red hymnal. Lord of all hopefulness. I love that first verse. Lord of all hopefulness. Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares, no worries can destroy. 765, stand with me please as we sing. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters and all the beauty of the natural, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all you have made, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace and prosperity for all. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them. We pray especially for those we now name aloud or in the silence of our own hearts. God of grace, Hear our prayer. for this community of believers that what, wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, that their faithful witness guides your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Greet those around you as you are seated, please.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Please be seated. Friends, in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. Gave thanks. Gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray in confidence as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, Jesus invites you to this table.
Pray with me, please. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Jesus Christ, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to invite Lee to come forward and share some information with you, please. I have a rather bittersweet announcement to make. Um, Ed is moving towards retirement. And he has decided to move to North Carolina. Um, unfortunately, he is, unfortunately for us, he has taken a position um, with a church in Asheville, North Carolina. He will be the director of music and liturgy. Am I correct? Okay. And down there. And it was an offer he couldn't refuse. And when he shared it with um, me and then later the council, I totally agree with why he took it. Um, like, as I said, he's heading toward retirement and he's going to be in the right place to do it. Um, so it's bittersweet for us because we don't want to see him go. Uh, he will be here till uh, December 31st will be his last day. That will be a combined service with Zion. Uh, so we do have him through Christmas, which is wonderful. So thank you, Ed, for staying through Christmas. Um, so good luck and Godspeed, but there'll be plenty of time to uh, talk and plenty of time to um, enjoy your music through Christmas. So I wanted to let the congregation know. And um, thank you, Ed. We appreciate all that you do for us. Ed's moving to retirement? <laughs> okay. We do want to bless you and wish you the best, Ed. Thank you for your years here, for how you have blessed us. As we look to the Lord to bless Ed, we look to the Lord to bless Good Shepherd as well. Let us pray. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Him is in your bulletin at the Lamb's high feast we sing.
Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.